This week, we're headed south from Wisconsin to my old stomping grounds outside of Salina, Kansas, spending a few days with family as I chase down the beautiful Rio Grande Turkey. This was merely a pit stop on my full journey down to Oklahoma, where we join up with the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation as we set into some large prehistoric paddlefish, of which the state is known for. But that adventure is worthy of a video all on its own. This drive is all set before heading back up to Wisconsin as I make my hunting debut in America's Dairyland, taking a shot at big eastern birds. I'm Bo Angles, and I've never been one to turn down an adventure, especially when it includes chasing a monster catch. Whether it's projects, food, hunts, or fishing, we've got something for everyone. We are modern day outdoorsmen. I'm headed back to a family farm where historically we have found Rio Grands everywhere. I mean dozens, dozens of Rio Grands. Um, a turkey hunter's paradise is how I grew up. Um, and every season, you know, as, as soon as we kind of got the idea of how to turkey hunt, you know, calling them in and having everything set up, my brother, my dad and I, uh, spring and fall, we'd go out, hunt Rio Grands in central Kansas. And, uh, and that was just kind of a way of life. They really took off from there, just the interest in turkey hunting. So, first morning in Kansas. We set up the blind the day before. Uh, you know, we don't see any turkeys. My grandfather, who, uh, who owns the land, he had been telling me that he'd been seeing turkeys. Uh, not very many, two, three, nothing like years before. And so we're just kind of making use of uh, you know, what we have, really. It's sunny, it's warm, and I sit down and I'm just hoping to hear one turkey gobble, just hopeful. You knowing that the population has been kind of cruddy over the years, um, I was just hopeful that maybe one turkey I could hear and start calling, you know, and just kind of build this kind of back and forth until maybe they come in uh, towards me. That's what I was hopeful for. And it just blew me away. I mean, I had turkeys coming, you know, gobbling out from the, the east of me, from the west of me. I had at least two or three north of me gobbling. And I was hearing all of this just all around me. And I was just thinking, my God, this is so much better than what I figured it would be. They kind of had a little bit of fight in them. And before I knew it, uh, there was a Tom out in the field. And he's you know, gobbling back at me. At this point, I'm doing a little bit of hen yelps. Um, and I've got my half strut Jake, and I've got my hen out there in the field. And you know, I don't even know if he can see them at this point, but he's still coming my way. And at some point, he makes contact with those decoys. And you can tell, I mean, he starts to come in pretty quick. And I thought, man, this is perfect. Everything is working out exactly how I want it to go. And then, he finally comes into frame with the decoys out in front of me and I'm thinking, all right, here we go. Uh, I'm making sure all my cameras are good. Uh, that's the one thing about hunting by yourself. Uh, you have to do, you, you can't just worry about the, the gun anymore and the turkey in front of you. You have to worry about the camera over here, getting the turkey. If you have another camera on you, you have to make sure it's going. Um, there's just so many more factors that you don't have to think about when you're just out there to hunt. Uh, camera's on, you know, I, you can see him come into frame and, uh, and he just decides he does not like the look of this whole scenario and decides just to, to run away. Well, at this point, I'm kind of freaking out like, oh no, everything's been perfect up to this point and now this is ruining it. <laughs> and so, to my surprise, he, he goes about, oh, 10 yards away and then he doubles back. Well, at this point, I'm realizing, you know, I've got to hurry up. Uh, I've got to get my gun up and make this happen. So, of course, I got my gun up, um, you know, and, and uh, I'm waiting for him to come back into frame. Well, before he can really get back into frame, or if he does, you know, he's only there for a second or something like that, he decides a second time he does not like the look of this whole scenario, and he's, he's heading out again. And that's when the freak out really like hit me. Like I've done all this work, I've set all this stuff up. This has been textbook all the way in, setting up this whole story. And so at this point he's running away and I lean out the window and take a shot. And then I take a second shot and he does not drop dead. And I am just freaking out at this moment thinking, I put in all this work, 
I drove all the way down to Kansas from Wisconsin. It was like 12, 13 hour drive. And I am going to screw this up right here, right now. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. Oh, that's humbling. It's so humbling. I've never missed a turkey before. God. I, I, I just don't even know what to say. I'm, I'm just at a loss of words. I mean, it just did not go the way I wanted it to go. Um, and that guy flew off. He was gone. And for the next two days, I sat out in that blind and I didn't see anything. I uh, heard some gobbling, but it was windy. Uh, it was just not that sunny day that I had in the very beginning. And so my three days in Kansas went by real quick. So that hunt in Kansas, um, that was pretty bad. That was uh, one of my first times I've really uh, missed a turkey. And, uh, and the paddlefish trip did help. We caught some paddlefish. It was a fantastic time down in Oklahoma. Recommend that. Obviously, we're gonna have a video out about that as well. But I knew at that point that Wisconsin was gonna to have to be my redemption story. Because um, I wasn't gonna put out a video saying, you know, oh, I went to Kansas and hunted a turkey and missed. <laughs> that just sounded lame to me. So I, I made it my thing to make sure that I did Wisconsin by the book I came out, I spotted turkeys, I came out days before and set up the blind, and then when I came out here on the first day of the season, I made it happen. And when I came out for that first day of spotting turkeys, you know, trying to figure out where they are, and came up over this hill, where we ended up setting up our blind, and um, stuck to the trees, stuck pretty close to the trees, didn't want to scare anything, and I kind of crouched down under this uh, branch, sort of like, what's right here anyway, I see a hen off in the distance in my binoculars. And I can I can tell that, uh, you know, it's another turkey out there. And I put the binoculars down and there's another turkey. And I'm like, oh, this one's big. This is a Tom, it's gotta be. And I look in the binoculars and sure enough, it's Tom. And I'm like, all right, top notch. We, uh, we've spotted our Tom, you know, we, we know there's turkeys out here. This is a good spot for it to be. And I put my binoculars down again, and I noticed just 20, 30 yards away from him on his right side, there's another Tom. And I'm like, why in the world is going on right now? Every time I put my binoculars down, I see another bird. And so I look in the binoculars at this guy, and he is, not only does he have a ginormous beard, but he's also got a second beard sticking out. You know, he's got the two beards. And so, you know, that was Sunday, Saturday or so, came out uh, Monday, you know, before Wednesday when the season starts, set up the blind um, on this field uh, where we saw those turkeys and um, thought everything was just perfect. Thought everything was gonna work out, you know, absolutely perfect, gonna come out here on the first day of the season and it's just all gonna come together. And as I was walking up, I, uh, I'm about mm, 40 yards away from my blind at this point and um, I hear what sounds like 10 yards away from me in the forest, because I'm on the edge of the field, a gobble. I mean, it's in my face. And I'm like, oh no, this is not good. Uh, this is gonna ruin everything. Uh, and so I'm like, I don't know how close this guy is. I don't know if he can really tell that there's something going on. Um, I stopped for a moment and then just decided that I've just got to keep going. Who knows if he even knows what's going on. Um, I keep walking up to the blind. I'm, I'm taking off my backpack, taking off the camera bag and all this stuff, putting it in the blind. I grab the decoy, I'm putting the stake on. I'm gonna head out and put the, the, the decoy in the field. And, uh, and I start calling. I'm hearing, you know, um, little pops, little clucks from hens around me. I honestly feel like I'm surrounded by turkeys. Uh, and I don't know which way they're going to come out. Um, but I kind of do a little motion like like this, you know, to kind of stand up a little bit straighter in my chair. And, uh, and I see a Tom out in the field and I'm like, oh my God, he's already coming. This isn't even that, that uh, there's not even a lot of light. Uh, I hope that we can see it. And so he slowly starts making his way, you know, when he's a good, oh, 20, 20 yards away from the decoy. This is when two other Toms appear. And, you know, at this point, I'm... 
you know, trying to get the fog off of my binoculars to like see, to because I want to see if one of them is double beer, because I want to know which one to shoot. And unfortunately, as I'm looking through my binoculars and I'm trying to figure out which one is, you know, this monster turkey that I saw days before, man, none of them, none, not all three didn't seem to have a double beer. I was really faced with the choice at that point. Do I just go ahead, shoot one of these turkeys, and, uh, and just be happy with the outcome? Or first day of the season, do I just wait and hope that some other day a uh, double beard will show his face, you know? Um, or his two beards. And after thinking about it for a moment, obviously all of this is going by very quickly, and I'm thinking I woke up at 3.30 in the morning, I drove all the way out here, uh, I had to carry 30 pounds of equipment, camera gear, all this stuff, set it up in my blind, and had I really done a solo hunt before? No, I had not. At that point, the decision kind of became clear. been a heck of a journey. Can't argue with the results. I mean, we have a Wisconsin bird here, and it has been years since I've got uh, a turkey. And you know, I, I haven't measured this beard, but that is not a bad beard to, to start back off with. That's a good 10 inches there. I know when we came out for uh, the scouting that we were doing, uh, we, we had our eyes on you know, the old long beard, the double beard. Um, and would we have liked to see that come come to be? Absolutely. And we have put a bird down this year and we can be happy about that. And maybe old double beard will just have to wait till next year. Really happy about this and uh, excited to be back into it, really. So we got our turkey. Uh, we'll certainly cook up uh, this turkey. I think it'll be great. Good thing about, uh, I believe it's Wisconsin and Iowa. I think they have the largest turkeys, uh, according to the, I think it's the National Wild Turkey Federation or whatever. They have the largest turkeys in the United States. So we are going to be putting uh, good use to the uh, to the breast meat and whatever else we can, uh, whatever else we can muster, maybe the thighs and the and in uh, the legs and all that jazz. Wisconsin turkey down. We've been in Wisconsin for at this point in May. We have been in Wisconsin for one year and two months, and I missed the turkey season the first year. And I told myself, I always told myself that I would get out here uh, the, first, the, next, the next opportunity. And we did. We got out here and made it happen. And uh, we can be happy about that. Hopefully you enjoyed this whole story, um, you know, how, how it all worked out. I'm, I'm pretty chuffed about the whole situation. I'm pretty happy how it all uh, worked out and that, you know, I can count this off as my first solo hunt that's filmed and, uh, and in the bag and we got our turkey. I just hope that everything looks good on camera. It probably won't knowing my track record. Uh, and someday we'll have a second, a second. We'll get old Tony out here to help with the filming or something like that and maybe get a bird of his own. Um, seeing as how plentiful they seem to be out here. That's just fantastic. Turkey season, Wisconsin 2024 in the bag. Now I just need to pack up all this stuff and get out of here. <laughs> so I hope you've been enjoying the video. Uh, I honestly enjoyed editing it. I, I, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought. It's the first time I've really done like an interview out in the field and then use that uh, in the video. And I think it turned out really nice, honestly. Um, I wanted to clarify a few things that I don't think I covered very well when I was retelling my story. And one of them was my shots. You know, why did I miss those shots in Kansas? Was I just amped up and just, just missed it? And just, it's a flub on my part. Um, and I actually went, uh, before the hunt in Wisconsin, I went out and patterned my shotgun. I took um, some big targets and I put them out at 40 yards, 30 yards. Um, and, and tested it and honestly what I found was at 40 yards my shot the pattern like the center of the pattern when I was aiming at the middle of the target it was pretty much at the very top and so I was only seeing the very bottom of my pattern and it was a big target honestly um, so it was very shocking and that was with the federal premium grand slam 
and I actually switched to the Winchester Longbeard XR and you can just see in that photo the difference in the pattern at 40 yards I mean it was re it's ridiculous the amount of uh, little BBs that actually ended up on the target compared to the Grand Slam so I'm very curious if anyone else has seen uh, this issue I have used this shotgun my entire life for turkey and I honestly didn't think I needed to uh, shoot it on a, a target to see how the pattern would be laid out but after missing those shots in Kansas and actually the previous year I missed a shot on a turkey in Kansas and just didn't film it um, I figured it was worth testing so I'm glad I did that I made that change and at 40 yards at 30 yards I really started to see that pattern on the target and I was a lot happier um, I even started aiming a little bit lower um, and and then I really got that whole pattern on the target um, so that just added on to that whole layer of like I'm in the moment I'm worried about my camera I'm looking at the turkey and now I've got to aim like down at its beard basically so that the center of the pattern kind of like hits him on his face um, so I, I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that because I really didn't talk about it when I was doing my little interview there secondly the thing I really didn't get into much when I was talking about scaring the turkey walking in that morning is that I think the turkey I ended up scaring was double beard um, I think that was the big one uh, he was up on on a tall tree on my on my side and I and I did scare them off as I was setting everything up the decoy and my uh, popping up my blind because I had it laying low so it didn't blow away in the wind um, and so I think he is still out there but I will say with those three big toms being together like that I honestly wonder if they're just part of the same like they grew up as poults together um, and, and so I, I believe they're part of the same genetics uh, as old you know double beard uh, specifically because another detail I didn't get into was that my turkey actually had a double beard uh, and I have photos of it I'm not sure if I have any video of it if I do I'll put it in uh, but that was very shocking. I was very happy about that. It was my first double bearded turkey, even if it wasn't, you know, all that impressive. It was still there. Um, and I was very happy about it. But anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, as per always, if you did, like, subscribe, all that jazz. Um, but I'm really looking forward to getting out and doing more hunting videos now that I've got one under my belt. Uh, I cannot stress enough how much more difficult it becomes when you try to film while hunting you know controlling those two things at the same time and hey as you saw when i took those shots of my turkeys they were not in focus at all but uh, i'm glad that they were in the frame and that's that's what matters most we have got some big trips lined up in the future we've got uh, uh we're going to england this uh this winter we're going to guyana early spring to chase after arapaima red tail catfish piraibo all the, the the works um we're going to south korea next year um and i i'm really hoping amongst all that stuff we can kind of save up and plan a little bit better to do some hunts i would love to get out to scotland and hunt in the highlands for uh stag and, uh, and seek a deer and whatnot um so we'll just have to see what, what we can manage everyone but i hope you enjoyed this hunting video and i hope to see more hunting videos in the future but until then we'll just We'll just have to do what we can do. I'm excited to get this Alaska trip out soon, too. So, anyway, take care, everyone. We'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe with the bell for more content in the future. Feel free to check out a few of our other videos on the Modern Day Outdoorsman or check out Bowangles, the largest fishing game channel on YouTube, with new videos every week.